Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, this is certainly not about us, it's all about you. Now, you care about us, so <laughs> we know you want us blessed, and you want everyone here blessed. But Father, we just love you. We just thank you that we can be here in your presence today along with others. Father, your word says that we should not uh, neglect gathering together. So, Father, we haven't. And we consider it an honor and a privilege to be here tonight. Thank you, Father God, for the person's hand who we hold or people's hands who we hold. And we ask a richest blessing on them. And that would be a blessing from you. The world blesses. Other people bless. Other things can bless people. But, Father, you're the greatest blessing. So we ask that this service today would be guided by your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would guide Rick and, and Amy as they're up here leading the praise and worship. And we ask, Father God, that they may have a plan, but Father, if you have a different plan, uh, just lead them, guide them. And Father, I, I, I believe I have what you laid on my heart, but Father, if you have something different, we're prepared to follow you because really tonight is all about you. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just speak a blessing over you. We speak a blessing into you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Bible never shows me that I'm to curse, but it does tell me I'm to bless. So I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, not in my name or Good News Church's name, but I bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the good thing about that is we can bless every area of your life. Be blessed in your mind, your soulish realm. Be blessed in your spirit. Be blessed in your body. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, Father, once again, I ask you to bless Rick and Amy as they lead us in praise and worship. Bless them while they're being a blessing, and I thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Father God, we just give you thanks and praise for this time to come before you and worship you openly, Father God. We just give you thanks for the word that is about to be spoken, Father God. We just claim that it's the word that you chose for tonight, Father yeah. God. We just give you praise and glory for this Amen. opportunity. In Jesus' God name. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Amen. ladies. Thank you for uh, praying. Appreciate that. Strengthening the believers. It's important that we strengthen ourselves, or you are strengthened and I'm strengthened as believers. We talk about believers. We're talking about those that believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We're talking about those believers, not believers in, you know, uh, a good basketball team or a good football team or a good singer or someone like that. We're talking about really believers in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Believers that there is a God. He's a good God. Uh, we need to strengthen believers. And so we're going to have a strengthening believers series. And so on Wednesday nights we're going to be talking about strengthening the believers and it's going to be a series. Uh, some of this are things that we've heard. But you know, we need to put ourselves in remembrance of some things because it's important. You know, the, the uh, great apostle Paul and the great apostle Peter both said, put uh, them in remembrance of these, or I'll put you in remembrance of these, because they knew there's things we need to remember, we need to be reminded of. One of the things we're going to be talking about in this series is the importance of the Word of God. The Word of God and how it actually strengthens us. And I want to walk through uh, this here about on the Word of God. See, we need to spend time in the Word of God daily. We really do. It'll strengthen you so much. Somebody said, how do I fight off this? And how do I fight off this? And how do I fight off that? Uh, the truth of the matter is God has made it available for us if we just get into the Word of God. A lot of times we're too busy, you know, chasing the devil away and what we just need to do is get the Word of God in us. Now there's times we, we, we come against the devil. There's times we verbally talk to him and tell him to leave someone alone or leave us alone in Jesus' name. The Bible tells us we need to resist the devil. There's no question about that and, and we'll see that. But a lot of times what we need is more of the Word of God in us. And so we're going to be talking today about strengthening the believers, series uh, point number, or, or lesson number one, and that is the importance of the Word of God. We need to get the Word of God into us, and we're talking about five ways how to get the Word of God into us. You know, for me to say you need to get the Word of God in you is one thing, but to go through it and show us how the Bible really talks about it. You know, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, you don't have that. You don't have to put it up there. You don't, you don't need to put it up there. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How many already knew that? Say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah. See, that's why you need to put it up there. <laughs> and if you don't know that, that's okay. We're all still learning. None of us know everything. Uh, some of us think we do, but we really don't. 
Now, God is the only one that really knows everything. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So our series starts with a very important thing. How do I get strengthened as a believer? I get strengthened by getting the Word of God. Okay, how do I get the Word of God? Okay, number one would be this. Hear the Word. Hear the Word of God. How do I get the Word of God? Hear it. You say, well, that sounds pretty simple. Yeah, but let's talk about it for a moment. Maybe you never looked at it the way we're going to talk about it tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you uh, to follow along. Uh, I want to talk about Noah for a minute. Noah was a man of God. Noah was talked to by Almighty God. Uh, In other words, when God talked, that was his word. Noah heard the word of God. And when Noah heard God speak, faith leaped up in the inside of him. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so he heard God speak. And let me read to you uh, what God said in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 18. We're going to be reading for a little bit of time here. It says, but with thee, this is God speaking to Noah, but with thee will I establish my covenant. A covenant is a very important thing to God. God has the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, the New Testament. But also in those, diff- in those two covenants you'll see Him make a covenant with Abraham, you'll see Him make a co- covenant with Moses. You'll see different covenants. And so you'll hear Him speaking about this. It's simply a, an agreement He's made. Uh, we'll go with that explanation right now. But with thee will I make, or will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark. Thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee, and every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark. Now watch, to keep them alive. Now he's saying, I'm going to take you into the ark to keep them alive, and he's telling them, I'm going to keep you alive. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It's important that we hear the word of God. It strengthens you. Noah's building this ark, and he could have had all kinds of concern. God says, don't worry about it. I've got a word for you. The word is, you're building the ark so I can save you and the animals. Your family will be saved. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We went back to the Old Testament to show you it's always been that way. The way Noah got faith is because God spoke to them. Him, amen? Amen. Now Abraham is another character in the Old Testament. In Genesis chapter 17, starting with verse 4, watch again. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word of God is how do you get the word of God into you? By hearing it. That's what we're doing right now, by the way. You're hearing the Word of God. That's why I think it's really important when you come to church that I'm preaching the Word of God. Because faith doesn't come by me just telling you some story. Faith comes by me speaking the Word of God. Amen? Amen. In Abraham's uh, situation, again, God's going to speak to Abraham. Now, Abraham, people said, man, Abraham had so much faith. Abraham had the Word of God spoken to him. And that Word of God gave him the faith. Uh, Genesis chapter 17, verse 4, it says, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. This is God speaking to Abraham. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. And we all uh, maybe already know that uh, Abraham had no children at all. And now he says, I'm going to call you a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thou shalt uh, be called. Uh, thou shalt be Abraham, for the father of many nations have I made thee. Now this is God speaking. God speaks. God's word brings faith. How do you get the How do you get the word of God? By hearing it in Genesis chapter seventeen, verse six. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. God has spoken in His word a lot of things about you and I, and faith comes as we hear it. The Word of God. How do I strengthen myself as a believer? By hearing the Word of God. Taking it in. That's what happened to Noah. That's what happened to Abraham. They both had to hear and then they had this faith. Turn to somebody and say, I hope you're listening to him. Go ahead. I don't mean listen to myself. Moses is another individual. We talk about Moses having this great faith and he did have great faith. There's no question. Noah had great faith. There's no question. Abraham had great faith. Moses had great faith. But watch how he got the faith. It says in Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of the Midian, and he led the flock of the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even of Hobron, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and beheld the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. 
why the bush is not burnt. Now let's stop for a moment. On the day of Pentecost, fire fell. It didn't burn the people, but they were on fire for God. Amen? So a lot of times you say, man, I want to get on fire for God. You can and not even get burnt out. You just get on fire for God. The Holy Spirit will fall on you or rise up on the inside of you. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush is, does not burn. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. Now, I want you to notice this. Look at verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. A lot of times I believe, I truly believe this. I mean, I wholeheartedly believe that God uses people in our lives. He uses different signs in our lives. He uses a sermon. He uses a situation. And he, and he tries to get your attention. And sometimes we're so callous, we ignore it. Never be callous and ignore it. Be open for God. Uh, Some could walk past a burning bush and not even notice it. He noticed the burning bush and he stopped. And he went over to see what was going on. And God said, when God saw that he stopped. See, I believe when God speaks to us, if we will stop and take it in, God's fixing to bless us. Amen? Amen. So anytime you're sitting there in a sermon or a ministry, something happens, and you're starting to listen to something, you say, oh yeah, but I'm kind of busy. No, no. Stop everything. Turn aside. Pay attention. Amen? Amen. It says, and when the Lord saw that he had turned aside, that's verse 4, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and God knows your name. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw nigh uh, hither. Uh, put off the shoes from off thy feet, for the place of whereupon thou standest is holy ground. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, sometimes it's good when you're praising God and worshiping God just to slip your shoes off. You say, why? Just say, Father, I realize that it's holy. What's happening is a holy thing. It's holy. It's a holy time. You know, when Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he stopped and he took his cloaks off and he bound himself. And he went around and he took the sandals off the apostles' feet. Something was fixing to happen. It was a holy time. And he washed their feet. Sometimes we ought to just uh, we ought to understand what's going on. Amen? Take our shoes off. Say, God, I don't know why I'm doing this. Pastor Tim talked about this. Uh, whatever you want to say. And I believe by acknowledging it, you open yourself up for a move of God. Amen. Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. And he said unto him, Draw nigh hither, and put off the shoes from thy feet, for the place whereupon thou standest is holy ground. Oh, uh, moreover, he said, I, now watch, God starts speaking faith. God's word is how we get strong as believers. God is going to start right from the beginning to speak unto him. And as he speaks to his, his the word of God is going to start building his faith. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God, because you weren't supposed to look at the face of God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now I want you to hear this, everyone. This is still the way God works today. In the New Testament church, this is the way God works. This is how he worked back then. This is how he works now. He'll speak a word to you. He'll say, listen, I want people to get saved. I had my son Jesus Christ die for him and her. I want them saved. Now go get them. He says, we're going to get them saved. Now you go get them. God says, I did my part. Now you go do your part. You go, but, 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 but. And he goes, I'll go with you. Amen? So, so God needs you. Turn to somebody and say, God needs me. <laughs> now turn back and say, God needs, God needs you. Absolutely. God says, you know, I have, I've heard the people cry. I have heard what they're saying, and I have come down to deliver them. But it builds faith. He says, so I'm sending you. So wait a minute. I thought you came down. You were going to deliver them. Yeah, I am. I'm going to deliver them through you. People get saved through other believers. People get saved by you and I talking to them. People get saved by you talking to your co-workers. People get saved by you and I talking to our relatives. People get saved because you and I live a life that they look at and it witnesses to them. They may not see God. They may not even hear God only through your voice. They only may see God through you. One man said, the only God I ever saw was my mom. 
The only Bible I ever read was in my mom's life. And maybe you'll be that Bible. Maybe you'll be the representative of our, our God in somebody's life. He said, Moses, I've come down to deliver them. I'm sending you. Uh, I, I like the services that we've had in the way past. I said, Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Send me into my family. Send me into my workplace. Send me into that area. Send me, Lord. Send me. Send me. Uh, you're going to be like Moses. Uh, he says, I want to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the, the land whereupon, uh, whereupon good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. He's building their faith. He goes, I'm going to bless you with some good land. I'm going to bless you with a place of milk and honey uh, upon the, uh, the place of the uh, Canaanites and Hittites and the Amorites and the Pestilites <laughs> and the termites <laughs> and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Prezalites and the Hittites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, now what he's doing, watch, what is he doing? He's building their faith. He goes, I know who's there. Uh, I whip these guys, I whip these guys, I'm going to go take you to a land. And you're going to whip them, 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 and them. He says, I know who's already there. I want you to know we're going to whip them. Amen? Amen. He's building their faith. See, you read the Word of God, you start getting, no weapon formed against me is prosper. He that's in me is greater than he that's against me. Amen? Amen. All right, well, it says, uh, Now therefore, behold, the, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me. And he's saying, I've heard prayer. Isn't it nice that God hears prayer? That builds my faith right there. And I, I, right now we can pray in the name of Jesus. They couldn't even pray in the name of Jesus. They were crying out to God, but they couldn't pray in the name of Jesus. We have a name that's above every other name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We can pray in the name of Jesus. If he heard them when they prayed and they couldn't pray in the name of Jesus, he certainly hears us when we can use the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's see. In verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said, now watch, and Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? His doubting, his faith is low. He's hearing what God says God's going to do, but he needs to hear more from God. That's why just a little bit of the Word of God is not enough. We need more of the Word of God and more of the Word of God and more of the Word of God because we'll, we'll hear some and we'll say that's good for then, but it doesn't apply to today. It's good for them, but it doesn't apply to me. And that's what's happening here. And he said in verse 12, and he says, certainly I will be with thee. Say God is with me. And this shall be a token unto you that I have sent thee. When thou hast bring forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God unto this on this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I came unto the, when I come unto the children of Israel, and they shall say say unto them, The Lord, uh, the God of your fathers, has sent me unto you. See, there's doubt again. Now watch, he has doubt. Okay, when I go there, and I tell the Israelites that I'm there, God sent me, what am I supposed to say? Uh, uh, say unto them, the God, the God of their fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am. Now this is important. The I am is important. I am. Uh, what is your need? Well, I am the answer. You know, I'm facing a situation. I am the one who can deliver you. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. I am the one that knows what to do. I have lack of knowledge. I have the wisdom you just need. I need a healing. I am the one that has that healing. I need prosperity. I am the one that has pro that prosperity. He says, I don't want you to lock me down into uh, one name. I want you to tell them I am, because I am the one. I am the God. Amen? Amen? He says, I just want you to say this. I am that I am. He is. And said, Thou shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt uh, thou shall thou say, <laughs> thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Now we just read how God 
since Moses, we all talk about the Passover, we talk about the plagues, we talk about how God delivered three million Israelites out of bondage, and how Moses led them out. It's a fantastic situation. But what we need to know is Moses needed faith. He needed to be strengthened as a believer, and the way God strengthened him is by letting Moses hear his words. Amen? So hearing the word of God is important. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says, uh, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Everybody say hear. hear. The, the Apostle saying this, how can they call if they haven't, if they don't know? They need to hear. So he says hearing is important. And he, again, how shall they believe in whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So hearing the word of God has been important since Noah, Abraham, Moses, the apostle says the way to get saved is to hear the word of God. So how do I get strengthened as a believer and how do I get the word of God into me? By hearing it. That's why it's important that we're here tonight teaching the word of God and we're listening to the word of God. Amen? You know, so nice on my uh, my iPhone, and I'm not selling iPhones in the lobby. Well, maybe we might for missions, you know. But on my iPhone, I can punch it in and I can listen to the Word of God. I love driving and listening to the Word of God, exercising and listening to the Word of God. Uh, I used to have tapes. You know, you have to go get those tapes and put them on and all that. Now you just go boop, 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 and the guy's talking. You can, you know, hearing is important, amen? Hearing brought faith to Noah to build an ark in the midst of flood. Hearing the word of God brought strength to Abraham to be the father of many nations. Hearing helped Moses deliver three million people out of bondage. And the Apostle Paul says the way you get saved is by hearing. So hearing is important. Amen? Now listen, talk about Jesus. Everyone, you, you, we just talked about Noah. We talked about uh, you know, Moses. We talked about Abraham. We talked about Paul. But, 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 but let's... Jesus. Listen to what he says in Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Mark 16 verse 15. How do you get faith or how do you get the word of God into you? Mark 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and he that believeth not shall be damned. Now watch this. How can they get faith enough not to be damned by hearing. Hearing is a way to take in the Word of God. Amen? Okay, so point number one, how do you take in the Word of God or how do you get the Word of God? Uh, it's by hearing. Secondly is to read. Read the Word of God. Hear the Word of God and read the Word of God. Second is to read the Word of God. There's ways to get the Word of God into you by hearing it and by reading it. There's times you just want to sit there quietly in your house or quietly uh, you know, on a break at work and read the Word of God. I remember... <laughs> I remember when I first got saved, I went back to work. I had been out of work because of uh, an illness, and then I went back to work, and I went back to work, and it's funny, when you're not working, you know you're going to go in there and evangelize the whole workplace. You're going to go in there bold and all that, and then you get in, you're intimidated. Now, i probably only one that ever found myself intimidated by others, but I was intimidated. I, t- I took my, my, I had a lunch I took with me uh, that day because I was trying to save some money, and I had my Bible, and I was going to march in there with my Bible and my lunch. I was going to eat my lunch and read my Bible right there in the cafeteria where I started to have the stroke. So I got in there, and I started to go down there, and I pulled my bag out of the refrigerator, and I take the stuff out and put my Bible in the bag. I was intimidated. And I grabbed the food by hand, and I walked down there, kept my Bible, and never took it out of the bag. I'm ashamed to tell you the story, but maybe you never even brought it to work. You know, maybe I got a little farther than you did. <laughs> you know, maybe you never got out of the car with the Bible. Or maybe you did. Maybe you sat down there and read it, and I salute you for it. But reading the Word of God, taking in the Word of God, is so important the devil will fight you and try to get you not to read the Word of God. Amen? He'll say, everyone's going to think you're some kind of nut. Everybody's going to think you're goofy. Don't read the Word of God. Oh, man, slap the devil in the face and read the Word of God. This is important. Watch, David says over in Psalm 119, Old Testament 119, 105. He said, the word is, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's in the 
Old Testament, that's David saying, thy word is a light. So when we read the word of God, it lightens up. We ought to read the word of God. Amen? Amen. You know, Patty, sitting in the front row. I thank you, Patty, for sitting in the front row. Uh, Rick, I, I, I thank you for sitting up here. Uh, he, take, he claims three seats, by the way. <laughs> He's very, he doesn't like you. He doesn't want you by him. <laughs> Somebody went over there one time and goes, no, 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 I need that extra chair. <laughs> and then we have Amy over here. Thank you, Amy, for sitting there. And Joanne, I thank you for sitting in the front. I thank you guys. It's so nice to have you up here. And this young lady here, when she sits up here, she's been an encourager for a long time. I've had ministers come in and minister at the church. They go, I like that lady in the front row. <laughs> I said, amen. <laughs> and they go, who is she? I said, oh, praise God. I love her. I love the fact that she loves God. It's not that she, well, I think she loves me. I love her. We all love each other. But she loves God. And so she, when she hears the word of God, she says amen. And, and also keeps you awake when you hear her voice. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So when, you, when you're, we're talking about uh, encouraging somebody. Somebody's afraid of the word, you get the word out and read it in front of them. The apostle uh, the, David says, the, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, till I come give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. It says, I want you to read. I want you to read the word of God. Now why would the apostle Paul tell us that we should be reading the word of God? Unless it's important. You know, why would the Apostle Paul, one of the greatest apostles of all time, say, you need to read the Word of God? Unless it's important. One of the ways to take in the Word of God is by reading the Word of God. Hearing is important. Coming and listening to someone, listening to on your iPad or your iPhone or whatever, listening to where God is important, but also reading the Word of God. Something about your eyes, you know. When you take something in with your eyes, when you really look at something and draw it in, it really uh, stays in your mind. And, and Peter says it this way in First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. He says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that they may grow thereby. Man, we need to read the Word of God and take it in. Amen? Amen. See, reading is kind of like, my, my, I remember uh, someone said to me, man, you really like those books. And I go, yeah. They go, you just... You're devouring those books. I go, devouring those books? Go, yeah, you're just eating them. I go, I'm not eating the book, I'm reading it. Go, you're devouring it. Well, and, and now it can apply to the Word of God. We need to eat the Word of God. It says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow therein. Man, eat it, drink it, take it in. Amen? Read it, baby, read it. Uh, Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. This is when he's talking to Satan who's tempting him. We ask, how can we get strengthened as believers? How can we get strengthened? Because there's so many things that try to get me or try to get you, try to get you off a or out of line. Well, if something try to get Jesus Christ, and listen to what he said. He said, but he answered and said, it is written. How did he know that? He had read it. He said, it is written. How did he know that? He had read it. How did he know that? He had read it. He had sat there and talked to the leaders. He had heard it, but he also read it. He read the Word of God. Um, I talk about my pastor, Pastor Sumrall. Uh, if you were on a plane with him going to Israel, if you got a chance to walk over and see him, he'd be reading the Word of God or sleeping, reading the Word of God or sleeping, reading the Word of God or sleeping, and then he'd get up, and man, when he got up, everyone got up because he was a powerful man of God. Reading the Word of God is a powerful thing. Jesus, Satan came and said, blip, 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 and Jesus says this. But he answered and said, it is written. Everybody say it is written. It is written. See, if you want to know what's written, you've got to read it. A man shall not live by bread alone. Oh, here's something we need to know. Physically we need bread. Uh, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We need the word of God. So number one was we need to hear the word of God. Number two, that we need to read the word of God. Number three, we need to study the word of God. How do we take the word of God in? We hear it, we read it, and we study it. Studying the Word of God is important. Studying is different than reading. Um, I like Western books. I do. I don't know why I've always... Well, I know why. My grandpa liked them, and I, I wanted to get c close to my grandpa. So I knew one of the ways I could communicate with grandpa is to read the books that he liked. So I read the books that he liked, which happened to be Westerns. So when him and I got together, we could talk. We could talk Westerns. 
And so my father came to me one time and said, how come my father and you are closer than me and my father? And I said, it was a, Louis L'Amour was the author of the Westerns at that time. I go, Louis L'Amour. And so my dad got all the Louis L'Amour books and read them and started communicating with his daddy. You know, So, so that's why I started. But then I got hooked on them. I just enjoy them. I just, it's like popcorn. You, know, you, you, you eat them in a couple, or you read it in a couple hours. It's just fun. And so it is important to do that. The Word of God can be like that. You can read the Word of God and just enjoy it. But also, I really have never studied a Western book. I never, I've never got on a map. I've never got a concordance out, a Greek index. I've never done that. But with the Bible, we need to study it. Okay, We need to not just read it. Sometimes you read it like a cowboy Western. Sometimes you read it as a, just a, a novel. Sometimes you read it for this or that. But there's other times we really need to take time to study the thing. In Second uh, Timothy chapter three verse sixteen, it says, "All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness." That's a lot. So we, it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. We can instruct us, and we need to be a a, a, a student of the Word of God. In Second Timothy chapter two verse seventeen, it, it tells you very plainly. The apostle says, "Study." So point three is right from the Word of God. We need to hear the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. We need to read the Word of God. The Word of God tells us we need to do that. And, and then right here we need to study the Word of God. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7, uh, 15, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. Amen? So we need to hear the Word of God, we need to read the Word of God, and we need to study the Word of God. Now here's one that I found very difficult. Uh, memorize the Word of God. Memorize the Word of God. Something about memorizing the Word of God, I'm telling you, it comes in so helpful. When you have the Word of God memorized, it just helps you. It's unbelievable how memorizing the Word of God is so helpful in life. To read the Word of God is good. You need to. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You need to hear it. You need to read the Word of God. Jesus did. You need to study the Word of God for sure. The Apostle Paul being used by the Holy Spirit of God says, make sure you study. But then you also need to memorize it. There's all kinds of ways to do that. Um, I got a little scripture cards, and it would say the verse, and it say the scripture and the verse again, and I would I would carry them out in this little packet, and I walk around, and I, I'd, I'd say it, I I'd put it down, I'd say it, and say it, put it down, I'd say it, and put it down, I'd say it, and then the whole pack, and I just go through them over and over and over, over and over and over and over again, and it took me a long time. It, you know, I may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I can get it sooner or later. And I got it. I went over it and over it and over it and over it and over it, and pretty soon I had it. I remember one time I was going through a financial situation. I've talked about it before. I had a, uh, a Charles Capps book on the power of the tongue, the creative power of the tongue. And I knew how important it was to memorize these verses. And so I had this book in my, my back pocket. I had really just gotten the book and started reading it. And uh, I got called in and uh, I was working for a church. And they called us in and said, you can still work for the church, we just can't pay you. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> and I said, well, thank you. And, uh, and I didn't know what to do. And I, I was in the auditorium of the church. And I, I, I'm walking around. And a couple other guys were told the same thing. So we're walking around, we're praying. Gary Kathan was in there, by the way. Gary was praying. I was walking around praying. And a couple guys were praying. And I reached back in my pocket. All of a sudden, I've been praying for a while. It wasn't like immediately. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, that book. And I pulled that book out and I opened it up. And it opened up to, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that's really how I learned to memorize a verse. Because baby, when you need it, yeah. oh, you can remember it. You know, man, you, I walked around that church and I must have spoken that. I don't know. I, I joke around. I I know I spoke it a hundred times. I had to have because I was walking around that church. 
you know, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And at first I wasn't sure how to say it, so I had to read it. My God shall supply. And I slowed down because I walked too fast and my hands would shake. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall, my God shall. And I found out that day the importance of memorization. Because every so often in my life something would come up and that verse would come up. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The power of memorizing something in the word of God is so vital. Memorize it. Spend time. Memor- if you've got to do one at a time, do one at a time. A friend of mine, he, he just always amazed me with his, uh, his uh, ab- ability to remember. I said, man, uh, Pastor Rob Thompson, some of you might know who I'm talking about. I said, Rob, how in the world can you remember all those verses? It's, it's amazing. This was early on. And he had worked for UPS before he became a minister. And he says, what I did is I took all the scriptures, I put them on cards, and I plastered them all around. When I was delivering, driving the truck on UPS, I would, I would read the verses over and over again, and I'd say them over and over and over again. And that guy, I'm telling you right today, if you walked up to him and, and asked him a, uh, uh, one on, on healing, he'd tell you. One on this, one on that, boom, 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 boom. He had them. He had spent the time. And do you know how many people pe- he helped? And I've been able to help because of a verse I memorized. When you memorize a verse, it's just not for you. It may be for your wife, your husband, a friend, your coworker, a boss, a mom, or a dad. It could be for your pastor or church member. Memorizing a verse is very important. How do I strengthen myself as a believer? Well, I hear the Word of God. I read the Word of God for sure. I study the Word of God, but I also memorize the Word of God. I spend time memorizing the Word of God. I wish I could remember uh, the, the group who had those little cards. Does anybody here remember who the, the group Crusader? It wasn't Crusader, it was uh, Navigators. The Navigators, they're the ones that had the Navigators. That you can still look it up online and say, how can I memorize the Word of God? If you get on there, the Navigators are still on there. You can still buy the stuff on and they'll send you the little packet and they'll send you all these scriptures. You can grab them, put in there, and just go through them. You put them all in there. You, 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 it has plastic on one side and the other. You just take it out and put it on the other side. Put it on the other side until you memorize them. It takes a while, but pretty soon you got them. Uh, now, here's the Word of God. Uh, Psalm 1, verse 2. Uh, I'm sorry. Psalm 119, verse 9. It says, uh, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? In other words, how can he change his thinking? Uh, by taking heed thereunto according to thy word. Uh, taking heed according to thy word. Get it in you. Memorize that little, that, that, that verse. Uh, number uh, uh, five, meditate the word of God. It's important to meditate the word of God. Memorizing it, actually, uh, you, you kind of meditate on it too. Meditate mumbling, saying it over, not like the, uh, the chants of the people, uh, other people, but by saying it over and over to yourself and, and speaking the word of God. And Psalm 1 verse 2 says, But this delight is in the law of God, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Um, that's God speaking. He says, I like that this guy meditates on the word of God day and night. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This is God telling Joshua how he, can get the, how he can get strong. So how can you and I strengthen ourselves as believers? Here it is, Joshua 1, verse 8. How can we strengthen ourselves as believers? Here it is, Joshua 1, verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Everybody say meditate. meditate. I had somebody uh, talk to me about how terrible meditation is. Well, if you meditate like you know uh, monks do and things like that, of course. But the Word of God tells us to meditate the Word of God. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to meditate the Word of God because God told me to. The, the, uh, this, uh, the book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, what? The Word of God, not something goofy, but the Word of God day and night, that thou, what? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, and then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And of course, uh, it's pointed out here very clearly. Now watch what it says. I'm going to read it to you again. Watch. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That means you confess it, you say it, you memorize it. But thou shalt meditate. You dwell on it, you think about it, you keep going through it. Therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. 
for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. By meditating on the word of God, then you're going to make your way prosperous. Some say, well, I'm waiting for God to make my way prosperous. Well, you, you, he will by giving you the word and you meditate on it and speak it and confess it and memorize it. And then thou shalt have great success. Praise God. This was strengthening the believer, lesson number one. Strengthening the believer with the word of God. Amen. Uh, where's that microphone that was traveling around? You got it? Can you bring it over to Steve? Steve, I'm going to ask you to pray. Just pray and ask God to, uh, whatever God has in your heart, just pray, okay? Lord, I lift up everybody in this room. I ask you to quicken what Pastor said tonight. To each of our minds as we go to sleep tonight, that we'd remember what he said and how it applies to each one of us, the areas you want us to work on individually in our growth with you. That you'd remind us of that as we go to sleep, remind us as we wake up, and Holy Spirit urge us through our day, our days, to obey that, to humble ourselves and take the time to grow in you. I ask it in Jesus' name, to your glory. Amen. Pass that up to Paul, will you? Paul is the gentleman in front of you. Paul, why don't you just pray whatever the Lord's laying on your heart, please? Father God, we're so thankful that you are the God that loves us and takes care of us. We just thank you that your presence is among us if we would just invite you with us day and night, reading your word, listening to your commands and voice and your direction, that we would be that light that you so desire us to be, that we would be the light that would help others, that would get them saved, Father that everything we do and hear and see would be for your glory and honor. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you pass it to Marsha, your wife, if you don't mind. If, you, if somebody doesn't want to pray or you feel uneasy praying in public, just don't do it. <laughs> we'll figure it out, okay? But if it's okay, do it, Dear please. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We ask that through your word you would reveal your mysteries to us, Lord, your body of Christ, Lord, that they, your words would lead and guide us, Lord, all the days of our lives, Lord, and get us through these times, Lord, as we, we await your second coming, Lord Jesus, Lord. We just ask that your word would, would permeate our bodies, our souls, our spirits, Lord, that we would become flaming swords with using your word, Lord, that two-edged sword, Lord, would just permeate out of our mouths, Lord. As you, Lord Jesus, use the word against the devil, Lord, teach us how to do the same thing. Father God, we just thank you for everything you've done for us, everything you're going to do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Could you pass that over to the guy next to you? His name is Brian. And now, when he prays, you're going to hear someone pray in the King James language. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the words that have been spoken tonight, Father, that they are your words. Lord, that through your words, we have that life, Father. We thank you that you are life. Lord, it's us that as we hear you speak to us, that we would have eyes to see and ears to hear, Father. Lord, that it would just touch our hearts, that your word, would, as it flows in us, it would flow out of us, Lord, that as people look upon our lives, that they see you, Lord, that you are magnified through us. We just thank you, Lord, that, that you would touch every person that is sitting in this place tonight, Lord, that Lord, as we pray that you would continue to pour out, Father. Thank you for the love that we see. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, right in front of you, there's a gentleman. His name is Jim. Could you hand him that? Uh, Jim, I'm going to ask you to pray a sp about for somebody. My sister Patsy, um, she's been having some pain in her leg, and she went to the doctor today, and they said, you may have a blood clot in your leg. So before I came here, uh, we took her over to the emergency room. She's there right now. They had to take a, whatever they do, a scan or whatever, and to see if there's a blood clot. And so uh, we just want you to pray, if you would, please. Uh, Jim is a warrior, and I'm asking you to pray, and you know I, I know what you've gone through, but I think you've come through, and you're a fighter, and I want you on my side always, okay? Will you please pray for Patsy? body of Christ, your children, we lift up one of our own before you, the 
pastor's sister, right, Patsy. We lift her up before you, Father. She has a problem. As surely as we sit here, we stand with you in heaven. And it is from that place of power and authority that you have given us that we pray on her behalf. As you have taught us to pray. For you have given us authority. You have given us the keys to destroy the works of the devil. To drive off sickness. To extend your light into this world. For them to see your power in everything that you do. In the name of Yahshua. I command that clot to be gone in her leg. In the name of Yahshua, we, the body of Christ, in full agreement, command that clot to be gone. And that it will not return, that it will not float anywhere else and cause problems. It is just gone. Yes. In the name of Yahshua, if the pain is from something else, then we cover that too. We cover it in the blood of the Lamb. And we command that that pain, whatever is causing her any discomfort, to leave her. And Father, if it is something subtler, if there is something that is causing this against our sister, we rise up together against it. We bind it and we command it to leave her alone. You have no power over our sister. She is bought and paid for by the precious blood of the Lamb. You have no rights to her. She is forgiven. She's cleansed, purified. You cannot claim anything over her. We stand together on this. Lord, we thank you for the great privilege that you use us in these things. Whether it be small or great. It is all you. We can do nothing without you. But you offer us to us. You let us use it. We thank you. This is all to your glory and honor, Lord. May your name be praised forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now in front of you, Jim, to your left, is a lady there by the name of Joanne. Joanne, could you just pray God's blessing on Good News Church or whatever else you have on your heart? Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you tonight, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord, that where we have come and we sat at your feet and we were fed your word, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your word has have had a great impact on our lives, Lord. We thank you, Father, for every person that is present here, Lord, that you will bless them and you will anoint them. Father, we pray for Good News Church, Lord. We pray, Father, for, for every ministry of our church tonight, Lord. We pray, Father, that your mighty blessing, Lord, will flow from each leader, O Lord, to every member of the group, Lord. We pray for our uh, men's ministry, our ladies' fellowship, Lord, for the dunamis and gathering, Lord. We thank you. We pray, Lord, for the Ascend um, group, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the young people. We thank you for the children ministry, Father, for the teenagers. Father, we pray, God, that your word, O oh Lord, will go forth in their hearts, O oh Lord, Father, as they go out in this world, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will equip them, O oh Father, to be, Lord, the servant that you have called them to be, Father. We pray for you said in your word to go out into the world and preach your gospel. It could be at school, Lord, work, Lord, uh, in our neighborhood, O oh Father, wherever, Lord, we go. Let us represent you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your mighty blessing. And our pastor, Lord, that you will continue to bless him and to use him in a great and a mighty way, Lord. That, Father, that you will bless his family, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you will bless him spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, Lord. In every area of his life, oh Lord God, that you will bless him, Lord. Continue, Lord, every day to use him for your honor and for your glory, Lord. And we probably, Father, for the word that he spoke, Lord, that he... Lord, that he represents you, Lord. It's not his word, Lord, but your word that you have given to him, Lord, for your people, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we were fed, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, as we go about 
the rest of the week. And Lord, that we are refueling, Lord, ready, O oh Lord God, to, to fight this battle, Lord, as we're in this warfare. We thank you, Lord, Father, for your word that will continue to bless our hearts, Lord. We thank you, Father, for every person, Lord. We thank you, for, Lord, for blessing them and anointing them, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord, for your continuous blessings upon their lives, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory, Father. We thank you. Now, could you pass that over to this uh, amen choir over right here? <laughs> okay. Now, could you just turn around and look at everybody, if you would, Patty? No, turn around and look at them. Now, I'm just going to ask you to receive the offering, okay? Now, all, the, the easiest way to receive an offering is just talk from your heart on why you give. Why do you give? I give because um, to give into God's kingdom so it will grow and just being a cheerful giver, uh, not in what I can receive, but in, for others to receive and Pastor makes me nervous when I hear his face. <laughs> don't, don't look at me. <laughs> I scare Lord myself God, in the mirror. Thank you for this church, and, and we just give uh, to grow, to grow the church, and, and for others. Um, and I just thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful pastor, and for this wonderful church, and our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God! It's a good reason to give, because you love God and you love others, and you give. Also, uh, knowing that he will bless you back. So as Rick and Amy over here, thank God for Amy. You know, when she goes and plays at a concert or something, we miss you. I want you to know that we miss you. That violin, I love that violin. My, my sisters, uh, two of them used to play the violin, and none of them ever sounded like that. <laughs> Not even close. But uh, we thank you, Amy. Thank you for making the sacrifice of being here, and thank you for playing for the Lord. And Rick... We, you are a jewel. You really, truly are. I'm telling you, thank God for you, brother. I, I was at the hospital, and I said to my wife, I said, well, Gary's not going to be there tonight, I know, because he had called. He's got a relative graduating, and he's going to go support the graduation. I said, and Vern's always late. I can't count on him anymore. I said, <laughs> I said so I don't know what leadership will be there. She said, well, Mike. I said, Mike? No, I didn't say Mike. She said, she said well, you know, watch. She said, Rick will be there because he's steady. Thank you. Appreciate it, bud. When he plays music, uh, you can go ahead and give if you'd like. The usherettes, I believe, will be by in a moment. And I want to thank, and I want to thank every one of you, every one of you that prayed, I want to thank you. And you know, some of them in this room, uh, listen to me, please. Some in this room that prayed have lost some battles and have learned some things and they've got stronger and they're fighting better. And maybe they've messed up in their lives. And God has forgiven them and cleansed them. And God wants to use them. Amen? Amen. So today, everyone that prayed were not perfect. In fact, no one that prayed was perfect. Now, Paul will tell you his wife Marsha is, but really, <laughs> so you can still be used of God. Amen? Amen? You can still be used of God. You can still be used of God. God bless you. We love you. Father God, we just give you praise and thanks for the opportunity to come before you and worship you, Father God. We call out your favor on the people who came out tonight, Father God. Special blessing in their lives, Father God. We stand against anything that would come against them collectively, Father God. And we just claim it in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week.